everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are here to finally discuss this book. So welcome to my review of this book, and welcome to Empire of Storms by Miss Sarah J. Mass, where there are finally enough naval battles to accurately represent all of the ships that have set sail and sunk to a watery grave over the course of this series. So let's discuss some of our characters and where they are when this book starts out. Pretty much everyone is wandering through the woods. That's kind of where we start. We had a huge epic battle scene at the end of Queen of Shadows, and now everybody is just kind of like making their way to Terrison because Aelin's like, yo, I'm the queen now, time to go home. So they're kind of like traipsing through the woods, Aelin and Rowan and Adian and Lysandra, and just minding their own business, going home. Also, we're following a lead who was like Miss Scaredy Pants, who is like the ultimate Bella Swan character, while she's like clumsily tripping through the woods with a word key, trying to find Selena Sardathian and Aelin. So she obviously has no idea what's going on, and she's being stalked by Lorcan, one of Rowan's cadre bros who's not so nice. So we got that going on there. We also have Manon, Manon. I, I'm gonna go with Manon because that's how I say it in my head. Welcome to the Throne of Glass series where the names are made up and the pronunciation guide doesn't matter. We also open with Manon meeting with her grandmother who is like queen bitch and with Mr. Big Bad, um, Erwin, the uh, king and Mr. Just Mr. Big Baddy Pants. He's like the main dude that we're trying to take down. He's in charge of the Valg. He's like raising the Morath army and just all around not good news. So Manon is meeting with them and this is the first scene that we finally start to see her like stirrings of her morality kicking in, thinking that what he's saying is not that great of a plan because he wants them to go into Rifthold and take over and kill Dorian so that he can at least have like another area with an army. And Manon's like, I don't think that's a good idea. But okay. Jumping back to Aelin's crew, they make it into Terrison and they are meeting with Darrow, who is kind of like the figurehead of the few remaining lords that still um, reside in Terrison and still kind of oversee and rule different territories, and basically want his help in raising an army to take down Arwen and all of the badness in the world. And Darrow's like, you know what? You're kind of a cocky teenager and you don't really have the queen tendencies that we're looking for for our kingdom, so pass. And Aelin's like, oh, you did not do that. And he was like, oh, I think I did. And she was like, wait till I got my awesome army of assassins behind me and then you'll talk. So, I mean, foreshadowing, that's, that's clearly gonna happen. She's gonna call in some life debts and she's gonna have a badass army because that's what Aelin does. They also get word that Rifthold is about to be taken over and Aelin's like, go Rowan, fly in your little birdie form to go save Dorian because we need Dorian, he's kind of a key player. And Rowan's like, I'm on this. Meanwhile, Manon and her 13 are flying to Rifthold to take it over. And of course, Manon's like, oh, Dorian's kind of hot, so I think I'm going to save him. And also, I think I'm going to kill some of these yellow leg clan people that I don't really like because they're annoying. So, I mean, that goes down. She saves Dorian, kills some of the yellow leg people, which is obviously not a good decision on her part because she's going to start turning all of the witches against her when she's supposed to be their wing leader. And she sends Dorian off with Rowan to go, like, do their thing with Aelin. And she's like, yo, I saved your life, life debt man. We jump over to a whole bunch of scenes with a lead in the forest and Lorcan kind of stalking her. And he's like, oh man, she's so weak, but I think she's kind of doing something important. So I think I'm going to follow her and, like, somewhat protect her for a while. Which is, like, the ultimate Twilight romance. It's, like, the really dangerous, brooding, dark... It, like terrible influence of a guy and the like weak clumsy girl with the like bum ankle who has no idea how to come into her own person and they fall in love you know I mean Sarah J Maas is like the queen of just pairing people off every single side character has a romance in the series and everyone is great like you know what's gonna happen they are all evenly matched there are equal guys to there are girls and you see exactly who is going to pair off with who, and you're totally okay with it, which is one of the few things about this book 
that makes it a guilty pleasure read, but I just love it. I can't stop reading it. But jumping back over to Manon, she is clearly going to be punished because she killed some witches in this whole Rifthold siege thing, and she's like, I ain't got a problem with that, y'all were bitches. So I did what needed to be done, and the matrons are like, yo, you can't do that. That's kind of bad to like kill your own kind. So in payment, we're not gonna kill you, but we're gonna kill your second Astrid. And it's like, ooh, emotions, hurt, feelings. So we have like a really emotional scene of preparing for Astrid's execution, which Manon like volunteers to do to make sure it's gonna be a quick death. And it's like really emotional. This is one of the few scenes that I was actually like tearing up at. For some reason, Manon's scenes just like really get to me. And it was just so well done and so dramatic. They're like on a cliff and Astrid's like kneeling there. And Manon's just like, ah, uh, not today, and swings on her grandmother. And you're just like, yay! At least I was. That was a really good scene. That one was like bookmarked like right there, I think that one is. That was a good moment when she turned on her grandmother. Clearly this starts a huge fight and her and her grandmother start brawling and her grandmother's like super old but like really intense and hardcore. So she like almost guts Manon but Manon gets away on Abraxas. But we also find out that Manon is like the Crochin queen, like the long lost Crochin witches. She's like the descendant of them. So she technically is the ruler of the waifs and that's pretty bitchin'. So that's a pretty cool thing. We got another queen going on in the mix here. Jump back over to the crew. Rowan and Dorian are like sailing across the sea while Rowan's trying to like teach Dorian how to control his power. And they have like some bro bonding time, which is always good. And Aelin, Adian, and Lysandra go to like this temple and like take it back from the people who are defending it who didn't deserve it and she takes back for who like rightfully deserves it and also goes on like a little vision quest where she talks to Brandon. So that's pretty cool because he's like a great 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 grandfather somewhere back there. And he tells her about this thing called a lock and she needs to find it because that's clearly what the word keys go into. You got a key, you got a lock. That's That was inevitable. We all saw a lock coming. So she needs to go to the stone marshes to find said lock. Off on a side story with Elite and Lorcan, they join the circus. That happened. Everybody eventually converges into Skull Bay, which is the first scene that I was really excited to have seen come up again. After reading the Assassin's Blade, I just really liked the whole pirate vibe thing. So we go back to Skull Bay to meet pirate captain Rolf, who is going to be like the first person that Aelin tries to recruit into her side to be on her army so that they actually can, you know, stand a chance against Erwin. And Rolf's like, um, nah, you were like a 16 year old turd who like stole my ships and like ruined everything when you tried to like free the slaves, so pass? That is until we see the Morath army moving into position in Skull Bay. And Rolf like pees his pants and is like, I can't handle this. Can you please help? If you help, I'll join your army. And she's like, all right. So this starts the first epic sea battle of the book. Can we all agree that Sarah J Maas is like the queen of epic battle scenes? They're just the best. And this book is just chock full of them. So this is the first scene that we really see Aelin like spiral into her power. And we find out that she's been channeling it for like three days prior, just like funneling all of this power in her. And she literally turns into like this fiery death tornado of doom. And like, wrecks everything and it's amazing. Meanwhile Lysandra who is the shapeshifter turns into like the sea dragon and it's like this really intense battle scene between the sea dragon and the sea wyverns and she almost dies but then she doesn't and it's just ugh, crazy battle happened. They win, Rolf is on their side and then we finally move into some sexy time. So all of the sexual tension finally comes to a head on the beach in some fire. I mean, Aelin and Rowan are like getting it on and Aelin is literally on fire. And all I could think during the scene is like, you know that scene of Titanic where like there's the hand on the foggy window in the carriage and that's like the trademark, like, oh man, they boned there. In my mind, all I'm picturing is like person on fire having sex on the beach. Isn't there gonna be like an ass print of glass in the sand? Cause you know, like, sand, fire equals glass. So I feel like there's gonna be like this weird imprint when they walk away of their like sexy time just permanently ingrained in the sand. That's all I could think about because I'm a mature person. So then the whole crew decides to go to the stone marshes because they clearly need to find the lock. 
and figure out what to do with the lock to, like, save the world and everything. So they all get on a boat with, like, Rolf's army, and they're sailing to the stone marshes to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, on the boat, there's, like, a whole bunch of sexual tension with, like, Adian and Lysandra, and while they're sailing on this boat, Manon literally drops from the sky on Abraxas because she's, like, half dead. So they chain her up and keep her there, and Dorian's like, hey, sexy lady, and she's like, hey, princeling, and... Again, sexual tension to plenty. Skipping ahead to a favorite scene of mine between Alid and Lorcan. Alid has her period. And this is one of the best scenes that I have read in a book forever. Because I'm one of those weird people that like during an apocalypse story, all I can think about is like, normal bodily functions. Like they never discuss like a three day battle. Don't you have to pee at some point in this three day epic battle? Or like girls get their periods, like it happens. How are you traipsing through the woods for like months on end and not getting your period or dealing with it? So the fact that they even brought it up in this book was fantastic and I loved it. So Alid needs to go into town to get supplies to deal with her lady time. And Lorcan's like, gross, but I'll go stock up on other stuff while you're there. Meanwhile, while she's there, she gets like kidnapped by some dark dark forces in the shape of her uncle Vernon, which she's obviously terrified from, and they try and, like, lock her in this iron box. And Alid shows us why you don't fuck with a girl on her period, because with the help of Lorcan, she just wrecks face. Like, she just finally comes out of her shell and is just like, nah, you don't do this. I am PMSing, you don't mess with this. So... That was really refreshing to finally see her come out of her shell and just, like, go ham on somebody. So then everybody converges in the Stone Marshes. Alid and Lorcan go there to get the lock. Aelin and her gang get there to try and find the lock as well. And while they're there, they find the lock. It's a mirror, which is odd. Um, and then, of course, a huge army of Ilkin show up, and Aelin's like, I got this, guys. And everyone's like, whoa, okay. And she, like, walks out to the middle of the desert and it's just like, boom, I'm really powerful and literally just, like, toasts all of them. So that was a pretty cool scene. And we get this really happy reunion with Alid and the girls because from her childhood she knew Aelin and she knew Manon. There's a less happy reunion between Lorcan and the guys who were hunting him and sent to kill him that happened. And then we get another happy reunion because Ansel shows up back from the Assassin's Blade again, another thing from that book, which was great. She shows up and is like, yo bitch, you need an army? I got an armada. Check it. And Aelin's like, yo, thanks. So everybody's catching up. Dorian and Manon finally get it on and it is kinky and rough and it is okay. There is just so much adult content in this book. And it was great because we've been waiting for it. So it finally happened. So then Maeve's army shows up and they're like, oh no, we're completely drained of power. We can't handle this right now. I don't know what to do. So they're like fretting and they don't know what to do. And it's the eve of battle. And Dorian is like, hey, you two queens, like Aelin and Manon, come with me. I got this great idea. We're like young teenage royalty. Let's all leave together. So he shows them how to use the mirror slash lock and they literally go into it and have like a vision quest on the eve of battle right before everybody's about to die because that's impeccable timing, Dorian. Good, good job. So they're gone. Aelin and Manon are just gone. Like just poof, gone. Meanwhile, everybody else is like, oh, we gotta like fight for our lives. And they're like struggling through this huge battle the next morning and clearly not gonna make it until we find out that Rowan like flew off in the middle of the night and convinced all of his relatives that were on Maeve's side to turn on them. So that was a pretty bitchin' scene when all of the ships kind of like turned and started firing on their own army. That was really cool. And then we are still struggling and almost dying when the 13 show up on their wyverns and it was just so great. That was like one of those like woo moments. I was just really excited. So battle's happening, we've pretty much won, and then they realize that Maeve isn't there. Where did Maeve go? Maeve is on the beach with a lead, because that's what a lead does. She just kind of gets in trouble. Um, and of course that's where Aelin and Manon come, like, strolling back. They're like, oh, we missed the battle? That sucks. Hey, Maeve, what's up? And she's like, um, I think you're gonna give me the word keys, and I'm probably gonna kill some of you, and I'm gonna break a lot of these, like, O's that my, like, bros over here had and she's just all around a meanie pants basically and Aelin has like no power left and can't do anything and just wants to save a lead and clearly has something up her sleeve 
So she pretty much endures, like, the worst whipping ever, which is obviously really significant to her from being in the mines. And they chain her in the iron box and leave. And that's when Rowan shows up with the rest of the gang and they're like, oh my god, what happened? And they find out what happened. We also find out that Rowan and Aelin got married a couple days ago so that Rowan would technically be the rightful king of Terrison, so that Terrison at least has um, a governing leader, basically. And Rowan's like, oh god, she did this on purpose. And that's when all the other armies show up that she called in life debts for, so they have like a legitimate ragtag team of like assassins and thieves and this whole armada of people that she's worked with in the past they have come to her aid which i still don't think is gonna be enough to take down the valg but who knows and we also find out that she slipped the word keys to manon so Maeve doesn't have the word keys she just has aelin and aelin is powerless and going to be tortured forever so rowan's like all right i gotta go get my wife back boom book is over what uh, it was so exhausting. Also, this is one of those books where I closed it and I thought back to the first book in the series and was like mind boggled that that book is in the same series as this book because it's so different. This, the last three books are in such a different category from the first two that it's like, it blows my mind how different and how drastically the series has changed. So where does that leave us? That leaves us with Aelin being tortured by Maeve and everybody else like, oh no, what are we gonna do? And Aelin was like, um, Lysandra's gonna shapeshift and look like me and she's gonna marry Rowan and act like me and so that the kingdom still thinks that I'm there and still a queen. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be like practically dead at Maeve's hands and everything is just gonna be bad. I feel like she can't die because that would suck. The series would just like end if she died. But clearly she needs to die in order to reforge this lock, otherwise Dorian needs to die, and Dorian can't die because hello everybody loves Dorian, but everybody loves Aelin, she's a protagonist, so what's gonna happen? Well, I don't know guys. I don't know. I don't know. There's just so much that has to be wrapped up in the next book that I feel like even though it's gonna have those like bible thin pages, it's still gonna be like this long because there's so much to do. There better be novellas after this because I can't let go of this series with one more book. It's just not going to be enough. Just not going to be enough. So those are my rambly thoughts and reactions through the whole course of the book. I mainly filmed this so that I would have something to like watch next year when the next book comes out so that I don't have to reread it and I can just like refresh my memory of like the key points which there were a lot of. I need to go calm down and drink a cup of tea because I'm out of breath and I'm way too excited about this series again now that I literally just talked forever. My throat hurts. I'm gonna go drink some tea and chill out. So let me know what your thoughts are on this book. I know they're very mixed. Are there a lot of plot holes in this series? Yes. Are there very tropey characters? Yes, I know they are and I love them all for it. It's fine. I accept it. I'm embracing it and it's great. So what do you guys think of the series and the turns that it's taken and where it's going? I would love to know what you think about it. Other than that, I hope you're reading some amazing books and I'll see you in my next video.